How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to show you an excerpt from episode 33 of our Muzzleloaders podcast on muzzleloader load development, and we're going to be talking about how to properly use a chronograph with a muzzleloader. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell to receive notifications whenever we post content, and let's get into it. Uh, issues with the chronograph because sometimes mm -hmm. black powder can really mess with chronographs. That was a challenge that we had for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the smoke kind of gets in the way a lot of times, and um, I, I still don't think I've quite figured out the best way to set up my lab radar on a muzzle loader. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'd like to try some other different things. Um, I got a different stand on order so that I can keep it closer to here instead mm -hmm. of way out by the muzzle and i think that might help maybe keeping it further out to the right i don't i haven't quite figured out the right combination yet but yeah <clears throat> and even the the ones that you shoot over and which are super i, I <laughs> wouldn't suggest those for mm -hmm. a muzzle loader just because it basically counts the time from it counts the shadow of the bullet yeah so it tracks the shadow of the bullet over a little sensor mm -hmm. and that's why it has lights on it and when that bullet goes through that sensor it measures the amount of time it get, takes to get from the front to the or the back to the front mm -hmm. and if there's a bunch of smoke in the way it's not going to accurately tr track yeah. the shadow of that bullet because it's casting other shadows for sure yeah i think you kind of ran into that with your super high velocities on the wolf <laughs> yeah yeah i was there was there was a, a group that i shot with the wolf that so i shot two groups of three and the first group was like reasonable i mean it was like what you'd expect from a wolf but then i shot the next group and it was saying that i was shooting like 2400 feet per second and i was like what is going on around here like that's absolutely like that's not happening and the strange <laughs> thing was it was three shots in a row mm -hmm. and they were all super close together which is even more of an anomaly because yeah. normally because i've had that same issue before shooting over a chronograph and normally it's like you get one that says 2400 mm -hmm. and then another one that says 1700 and then another one that says 2300 or whatever some mm -hmm. like a vast difference but the the fact that you got three that were so that close were so together. close together at that high speed i'm like that's I've that's never an seen anomaly like that that was very strange <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so smoke can definitely mess with that um and sabos is another thing yep. that we've found that have that can cause issues with that especially if you're shooting through like the the one you shoot through that measures the shadows mm -hmm. because the sabo can start to it's like starting to come off and like you know yeah. that that's it's inconsistency trying to track multiple shadows yeah so i mean if you're shooting an extremely tight group and you're having a little bit of weirdness with your sds then don't necessarily <clears throat> man you're choking up don't oh, necessarily hopefully. lose sleep over that because you're in, in the end you're achieving the result you want you're getting a tight group yep. and so that's really what matters at the end of the day but uh, yeah, and so I would say focus on your group, worry about your SDs a little bit. It's more important if you're using the, you know, long range muzzle loaders mm -hmm. like the CVA Paramount series and the Remington 700. Um, less important if you're doing stuff like, which is a standard Magnum. Yeah, I think like the all copper bullets and stuff would be easier to track on a, mm -hmm. on a, like a lab radar or something yeah. like that. Like Thor would be extremely easy because it's just, there's no, it's just a bullet. Like, it's literally just a bullet. Only they made 40 caliber Thors. I know. <laughs> I know. We'll see. <clears throat> you know. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Um, but, yeah. So, this all begs the question, too. Can you do load development without a chronograph? Um, I would say yes. Sure. Because for the reason we just stated, I mean, you can, you're not necessarily, if you have a Paramount, I definitely recommend getting one. Um, it's just going to be helpful. But if you're shooting just, uh, an Acura, then just pay attention to group size. If your group isn't very good, make some adjustments, shoot, shoot it again. again, make some adjustments, shoot it again, and then you'll eventually find a group that's good. Um, but it's all about taking the scientific approach, except you're not, you don't have the, the extra information of your velocities. Yeah. You're just trying to kind of play with it a little bit, you know, trial and it's a little more trial and error. I suppose I'd say. Yeah. And if you're, you know, got a HTR or Paramount pro or something like that, I think the chronograph is much more paramount see what i did there <laughs> oh <my gosh>. no <laughs> no <laughs> um because 
if you're shooting 700 yards, you know, a thousand yards or whatever, yeah. uh, you're going to need that velocity. Mm-hmm. And so it automatically keeps track of your SDs and ESs anyway. Yeah. So especially cause if you're doing that, you're going to want to have uh, a scope that's probably going to need that information, whether it's a range yeah. finding scope or a scope that is dialable, you're going to yeah. need your dope because yep. you're going to want to make sure you're able to, you know, where you're going to hit at that range. So, um, and you can go, go off of like the information that's given, um, from the manufacturer, but that's what, that's the whole point of what we're talking about right now is that everything is different. If I went off the, if I went off the manufacturer data for like a factory load out of a competition rifle, let's just say, cause I'm going to take it back to what I know best. Mm -hmm. I would never even hit a target. Yeah. You know, they test those in like a 24 inch barrel with in a controlled environment Mm -hmm. and so the velocities are i think 2700 feet per second on a 6.5 creedmoor let's say yeah and then i shoot it out of my competition gun which is a hand lap barrel which is much smoother Mm -hmm. so it's obviously going to speed up that bullet and then i'm shooting a 26 inch barrel instead of a 24 Mm -hmm. now i'm shooting 2850 like that's 150 feet per second difference that's not even (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I didn't even get, get me yeah. in the ballpark. So I definitely always recommend getting your own data. Yeah, for sure. It's always better. It's always better to do uh, do your own work than trust somebody else, especially if you're just going to take their word for it and not even practice. Like if you're just yeah. going to take somebody's word for it and go on a hunt and Good luck. say you miss, <laughs> like that's not, that's on, that's on you because, you know, you need to do the practice. You need to put in the work to make sure that your muzzleloader is going to hit where uh, it is because at the end of the day, you're the one that's caught holding the bag, not the other guy. You're, I mean, you're the one that doesn't go home filled with a tag filled. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from our Muzzleloaders podcast episode on muzzleloader load development. If you want to check out the full episode, click the card above or the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.